मंडी मनाली एंड कुल्लू इन हिमाचल और चमोली एंड देहरादून इन उत्तराखंड दीज प्लेसेज हैव विटनेस्ड वन ऑफ द डेडलीएस्ट रेनफॉल फ्लड एंड लैंडस्लाइड इवेंट्स इन द पास्ट फ्यू मंथ्स दीज आर एंड रेयर और आइसोलेटेड इवेंट्स द स्केल एंड फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ सच डिजास्टर्स इन हिमालयाज इज ग्रोइंग क्लाइमेट चेंज इज इंटेंसिफाइंग रेनफॉल एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन ब्लॉक्स नेचुरल ड्रेनेज ऑन वन साइड द नीड फॉर रोड्स पावर एंड टूरिज्म एंड ऑन द अदर लैंड्स दैट क्रम्बल अंडर प्रेशर ग्लेशियर्स दैट मेल्ट टू फास्ट एंड कम्युनिटीज पुश टू दी एच द रियल क्वेश्चन हेयर इज दैट कैन दीज यंग माउंटेन्स हैंडल रैपिड डेवलपमेंट और आर वी कमिटिंग अ हिमालयन ब्लंडर लेट्स डाइव डीपर इन टू द इश्यू Firstly let us get the basics right the Himalayas or the larger Hindu Kush Himalayas extends 3500 kilometers as part of eight countries from Afghanistan in the west to Myanmar in the east as many as 10 major river systems including Ganga Brahmaputra and Indus owe their origin to these mountains they serve as Asia's water towers supplying fresh water to nearly 2 billion people beyond water these mountains are a treasure of life the red panda snow leopard blue poppy all call this region home it's a global biodiversity hotspot teeming with species found nowhere else but perhaps most critically the himalayas influence weather patterns across the continent the snow and the ice reflect sunlight cool the atmosphere and regulate the monsoon the problem arises when these glaciers shrink when snow lines retreat and when black carbon darkens the ice This tilts the delicate balance resulting in changing rainfall patterns crop failures landslides and flash floods This isn't about mountain people it's about everyone who drinks water eats rice or breathes clean air in south and southeast asia So what is actually happening well for starters climate change is heating up the mountains the himalayas are warming faster than the global average as a result glaciers are shrinking A 2023 study warned that even if global warming is limited to 1.5 degrees centigrade, Himalayan glaciers could lose up to 50% of their volume by the year 2100. This isn't a distant problem. Already, communities that relied on glacial melt for crops are facing dry fields. Another consequence of climate change is water availability. Understand this: as glaciers melt, people argue that rivers will eventually have more water. which is a good thing but if we think on a deeper level it might be true for short term but in the long run this is very problematic this is because once the ice or the glacier melts completely the water flow will ultimately reduce it's like drawing water from a melting ice block but eventually there's nothing left on top of this the climate change factor is creating new dangers as well retreating glaciers form unstable lakes which was evident in the sikkim glacial lake flood in october 2023 next culprit is the human pressure which is playing dangerously on the sensitive nature of the himalayas the himalayas are geologically young still rising still shifting yet construction raises ahead in himachal siraj valley a 2024 report found hotels and homes built over blocked water channels during monsoon the water had no way to go but through the villages causing havoc another major problem is over tourism and waste management the deputy commissioner of shimla reported in june 2025 nearly 3 lakh vehicles had entered the town in the last two weeks due to tourist rush In Uttarakhand as well the Gangotri glacier area sacred and sensitive saw traffic jams garbage trash and air pollution with vehicle fumes Now you might ask how is this problematic the answer lies in the concept of carrying capacity think of himalayas like the guest house with limited rooms carrying capacity is simply the maximum number of people vehicles or activities that this guest house can support without causing long term damage Now imagine what 3 lakh vehicles can do to a city like Shimla. On top of this, natural springs are drying up. Women in Uttarakhand now walk kilometers for water, which is often uphill. 
many mountain households suffer food shortages not because there isn't land but because changing rain patterns make farming unreliable then comes weak rules with alleged poor enforcement by the authorities although laws to protect the environment exist but they are often ignored or bypassed take environmental clearance laws sometimes projects start first and get clearance later even the supreme court recently called it a recipe for disaster now to balance growth with vulnerability the goal isn't to stop development it is to make it smarter and sustainable villages need roads hospitals and power but these must be built in harmony with the land right now short term profit wins over long term safety we chase tourist revenue but forget carrying capacity we build dams but ignore the geology underneath sustainable development in the himalayas means schools that don't flood roads that don't crack and water taps that don't run dry for that we need planning that respects the mountain's voice so how do we protect the himalayas while still uplifting the people who live there well first and foremost is prevention is better than cure we need to urgently map landslide prone zones before any construction strengthen our early warning systems with mobile alerts and community drills then comes green growth and smart adaptation we need to harness solar and wind energy along with safer small hydro power projects tourism has to be made sustainable with focus on smaller groups guided treks and local homestays There is also a global angle to the management of Himalayas. We need to work together, include every country in the region. Countries must share river data, weather alerts and emergency responses with each other. The Himalayas are a living system, alive, breathing and hurting. The silver lining is that there is still time. If we act now with wisdom, science and compassion, we can chart a different path, one where nature and people can thrive together. The mountains are speaking loud and clear but the real question is are we listening